And now we come to the Gospel, which has been the goal of all the other readings, to prepare our minds, to give us biblical understanding. And this Gospel is going to be our Lord's second passion prediction. You see what the church is doing at this time of year? If we're getting close now, we're in September, and we're moving toward the end of the year. Show us the real meaning of our Lord's vocation. So he's telling his disciples. And Mark and the other Gospels, the synoptics, in their own way, they don't get it. Well, why don't they get it? Well, the first time they don't get it, Peter is just shocked that his master would have to go, oh, no, that's unfitting. That's not going to happen to you. And Jesus says, out of my way, Satan. Now, listen to this one. It's the same kind of a thing. Now, why is Mark doing this? To teach us. Why don't we understand the passion? Because we're egomaniacs. We want to be first, and we just love to have plenty of everything. So we don't understand the passion. Okay. They left from there, that is, they were uh, up in the north, and began a journey through Galilee. But he did not wish anyone to know about it. And then Mark tells us, he was teaching his disciples and telling them, the Son of Man is to be handed over to men, and they will kill him, and three days after his death he will rise. He's telling them. And he's right there. And basically they love him and trust him. But they just don't get it. You see? Uh, but they did not understand the saying, and they were afraid to question him. Why? Because he might really mean just what he says. And they don't want to hear that. See, we all don't, folks. You see how the saints are changed by the Lord. All they want is to be like Jesus. It can't be that bad. They're the happiest people in the world. So what's holding us up? You read these passion predictions. The passion of Jesus is a shock to us. It's a scandal to us. And our Lord is not blaming us, but he's inviting us to try to penetrate to another level of love and understand him and understand the love with which he went to his death so that we could be eternally with him. So, uh, but they were afraid to question him. So they came to Capernaum. And once inside the house, for Mark, most of the serious conversations take place inside the house. He always mentions that. He began to ask them, what were you arguing about on the way? Now, this is a winner. He just told them about his outcoming crucifixion, you know, outcoming torture and death. What were they arguing about? Well, they remained silent. They didn't dare tell him what they were arguing about. They had been discussing among themselves on the way who was the greatest. Can you imagine? Well, they're simple, direct men. That's why they, the Lord could change them. Most of them died for him when they were changed by the Holy Spirit. But right now, they weren't changed. And why does Mark do this? Because they say, oh, look how dumb these people are. They don't understand the passion. No, no, no. He's saying, you see how dumb you are? You don't understand the question. You see? Because you want to be the greatest. And so, uh, then he sat down, and this is the way Mark always, then he gives instruction. Okay? If anyone wishes to be first, he shall be the last of all and the servant of all. That's the first place. Well, that's news. I've been looking the other way. So is the rest of the world. That means, so who's first? Jesus. Why? Because he's the last of all. We just got everything backwards. You know, sometimes that happens. Like maybe a mom in the home, she's really trying hard, she's bringing up the kids, she's taking care of the house, and all of a sudden somebody realizes that's the center of the whole house. Somebody catches on. It's like that here, you see. If anyone wishes to be first, he shall be the last of all and the servant of all. The next passion prediction, he'll pick that up again and, and, and articulate what kind of servant he is. He gives his life for the ransom of many. This time, he takes a child 
placed it in their midst, and putting his arms around it, hugging this little child, he says to them, Whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me. And whoever receives me receives not me, but the one who sent me. You want to know the Father? Take care of this child. That child, if that child's not important to you, you've missed the whole point. If just the big benefactors are important to you, if you're a priest looking for money and, you know, you got to pay the bills. No, it's not that. It's the children, the child. They're the great ones. And anybody whose heart is childlike. And you meet them, you know, really mature, strong people. But they have a childlike heart. They really trust God. And they're not trying to be the first, you see. They're willing to be the servant of all. And that gets tough, because if you get to be the servant of all, everybody takes you for granted. And everybody's going to say, oh, you're so great, you're the servant of all. First place, if that happened, you'd lose your best spot. You won't be the last anymore. You'll be one of the first, because everybody's patting you on the back. You don't want that. Because then you lose the best place. Now, the very best, best place is already Jesus's. Nobody could take that. But you can be down there with him. You see? The servant of all. You see? Isn't that marvelous? And then, takes this little child. See this child? That's the greatest. What does that mean? Pliable, open, friendly, trusting. Not stupid. There's a difference. You see? Be wise as a serpent and simple as a dove. What does that mean? Be wise as a serpent when you know yourself. If I know myself, then I know what's going on in everybody else. And I can read it. Why? Because I know myself. This guy's lying, this guy's ambitious, this person's sensual, this person's whatever. How do I know that? Because I'm all those things. And I recognize them. You see? So, wise as a serpent means... Deep self-knowledge. And simple as a dove, but I've experienced the saving power of my Lord Jesus Christ so I can go out and be truthful and non-protective and not worry. You see? As wise as a serpent and simple as a dove. You see? Uh, is that hard? Oh my gosh, yes. I mean, it's hard because we're frightened. If I get down there and be the least of all, I may have to stay there. Well, of course you'll stay there. That's the best place. <clears throat> what you're looking for, as we all are, we go down to the least of all so that we'll get a promotion. And the Lord is saying, you don't understand. That's the promotion. Now you're there with me. Look, for instance, maybe we'll look together at the letter to the Philippians. The Philippians were one of his favorite communities, okay? But they were... You know, having some power struggles, believe it or not. You know? Uh, and so, he starts off chapter 2 saying, look. Um, where's chapter 2 start here? If there's any encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, any participation in the Spirit, any compassion and mercy, complete my joy. This is one of his favorite communities. By being of the same mind, with the same love, united in heart, thinking one thing, doing nothing out of selfishness or out of vainglory, rather humbly regard others as more important than yourselves. Whew. We have a hard time doing that, just waiting on line for the cafeteria. You see? Uh, each one looking out not for his own interests, but for everyone else's interests. Now, but doing it in a clear, strong, loving, happy way. The people don't notice that you're doing it. You know what I mean? Because if, you, if you're doing it and attracting attention to yourself, you've just lost the last place. Oh, he's so good. She's so generous. She's so humble. She's so whatever. And then what? You just got gypped to the last place. So then, he's trying to give them an example now of what this means. This is what's called Paul's system of teaching. They call it A-B-A. -A. 
he makes he makes a statement, then he says something else which throws light on it, and then he goes back to A and sheds light on A in the light of B. We're going to do one now. If you look at the one in First uh, Corinthians on the on the on the Eucharist, you see there's all this um, big shot, little shot, who's sitting where, and then he tells the institution of the Eucharist. This is my body. This is my blood. I'm pouring my life out for you. That's the model. That's the way you live in community. This is the same thing, but said with other words. You see, this may be a hymn, may be a hymn he wrote. But anyway, uh, it goes like this. Have the same attitude that is also yours, that is also in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, morphi tuteu, means the nature of God. He's God. He's walking among us, but he's God. See, he did not regard equality with God something, and then the word there means brandished about, you know. By the way, folks, I'm, I'm, I'm God, you know. How dare you ask me these questions? How dare you put me at the end of the line? You don't understand. I'm God. Shape up. He never did that, did he? We do it, and we're not God. That's what's wrong with us. Isn't that just what James said? Where do all these fights come from? Everybody wants to be first. It's amazing how we can be so stupid. What he tells us over and over again, you want to be first? It's, it's down there. <laughs> and then 50 years later we die and he says, come, my friend, you lived your life the way I did. Come now, sit on your throne. You're a, you've got a throne now. Okay. So rather, he didn't consider being equal to God, you see, this arpagmon, this thing to be clung to, brandished about. You know who I am? Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness and found in a human in appearance. I mean, we're all trying to get out of the human condition, and God came into it. We want to be so rich, so powerful, so immune from being hurt, so whatever, that we're the boss. Nothing can touch us. Well, it's impossible. The only one who could have done that is Jesus, and he's the very one who took the last place. You see how nuts we are? He humbled himself, becoming obedient to death. He obeyed the Father right to death. Death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name. What's that name? Adonai. The name. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess what? Jesus Christ is Kyrios. Now, we can look and say, the one who humbled himself, who hung on a cross, who died in agony, he's God. And he's one of us. I want to read that, if I can find it quickly, Isaiah 45, 24, if I can find it. You see, he's talking about, now every knee shall bow, every tongue confess. In one of the most monotheistic, I hope I have the right place, um, yes, by myself I swear, uttering my just decree and my unalterable word. To me, this is Adonai speaking now, to me, to me, every knee shall bow, by me, every tongue shall swear, saying, only in the Lord are just deeds and power. He takes that powerful, magnificent, monotheistic text and says what? Every tongue confess, every knee shall bow to who? Jesus the crucified one, who became the last so that we could be first. And he's saying, why don't you try to imitate me? So, you see, Paul, Mark puts this here for us. They're having an argument about who's the greatest. And Jesus is saying, well, you guys just don't get it. You just don't get it. One day you will know. 